You got it. Hello. Welcome to day 194 of Reading Through the Bible in a Year. I'm Eric. I'm Linda. And I'm leaning back too far that I won't be able to work right there. And we're reading Psalms chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9. And then in the New Testament, we're reading Acts chapter 18. And I guess I go to read first this time. Yeah. Right? And you pray tonight. You can, don't forget to pray for the problem with prostate cancer, but also the woman with the collapsed lung. Yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your great love that you lavish upon us. We thank you that you give us the privilege of being able to call upon you. And we do that tonight, Lord. We have our daughter's a mother-in-law who has collapsed lungs and water in her lung. And we lift her before you. We also pray for another gentleman who has had prostate cancer very severely. And we lift them before you too also and ask, Lord, your healing hand upon them both. And uh, also, Lord, we just thank you for your word. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless the reading of your word to our hearts. That we may grow in strength and in nature in you. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. And it's my turn to start. Hey. I oh, Lord, my God, I take refuge in I you. I thought it was my turn. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. Or they will tear me like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one directing me. Oh, Lord, my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have done evil to him who is hate at peace with me or without cause um, or have robbed my foe. Okay, let's read that again. If I've done evil to him who is at peace with me or without cause have robbed my foe, then let me let my enemy pursue and overtake me, or let him trample my life to the ground. <laughs> and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Wake, my God, decree justice. Let the assembly assembled people gather around you. Rule over them from on high. And let the Lord judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. O righteous God, who searches the mind and the heart, bring an end to the violence of the wicked. Amen to that. And make the righteous secure. Amen to that too. My shield is my God Most High, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who expresses his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow, and he will prepare his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flames and arrows. He who is pregnant with evil and conceives trouble gives birth to disillusionment. He who digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit he has made. The trouble he causes recoils on himself. His violence comes down on his own head. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness, and I will sing praises to the name of the Most High, the Lord Most High. Psalms <clears throat> 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have obtained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the star which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, I got a short one. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. That's a nice song we know. Okay, number nine. It's called For the Director of Music to the Tune of the Death of the Sun. Oh, I wonder what that music, where the music for that is. I don't know. A Psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to you, most holy. My enemies turn back and they stumble. 
and they perish before you. For you have upheld my right hand, my cause, and you have set on your throne judgment, right, judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness, and he will govern the people with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen to that. Oh, I get the wrong ones today. I think I'll share this with you. You never know. Sing praise to the Lord and throne in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. And they rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. The wicked return to the grave. All the nations that forget God. But the needy will not always be forgotten. Nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord. Let not man triumph over the nations by, judge, by judged in your presence. Oh, let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. I like this verse where it says, God does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. Amen to that. Mm. Okay, now we're reading from the New Testament. Chapter 18. And we're reading 18 to... 18. 18 to 18. Okay. Chapter 18. In Corinth. In After Corinth. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Cor Corinth. Corinth where he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome, Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when the Jews oppressed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Verse 7. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of uh, Titius Justus a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. One night, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Why Gallio was uh, proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a, a united attempt attack on Paul and brought him into court. This man they charged is persecuting the people, persuading the people for me to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo spoke to the Jews. If you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonably, reasonably for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own laws, settle them out yourselves. I will not be judge of such things. So he had them ejected from the court. Then they all turned on uh, Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, and beat him in front of the court. But Galileo showed no concern, whatever. Sad, eh? Verse 18. And we're done. Don't we just No, read the whole chapter. 
Oh, I thought you said 18 to 18. No, it says the whole chapter. Okay. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off in at Cancinaria because of a vow he had taken. Excuse me. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He be, uh, himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to speak more time with them, spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, "I will come back if it is God's will." Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he landed in Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church, and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout all the region of Ga Galatia and Perigia, strengthening all of the disciples. Verse 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named, a, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only a baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more accurately or adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving with the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. And that's and the end of the reading for today's reading. reading. So I'm going to close in a prayer and a blessing. I was thinking about how it said in the Psalms, God hears your prayers and never forsakes um, those who, who are in distress or dire need or in want in various different ways that through the three psalms we read. And so that's encouraging to my heart, and I hope it's encouraging to yours. Dear Lord, as we end this reading today, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to read your word and share our faith. We thank you, Lord, for everyone else who follows along, or even out of curiosity, just watches the video. And Lord, I hope and pray that uh, all who seek you and read your word or listen to your word or watch videos on your word, be directed by your spirit and know your peace and your care. And for everybody who's watching who has a need, Lord, who's lacking in some way in their health or their finances or their family or social life or political circumstances, we pray, Lord, that you hear the cry of their heart and you turn with compassion to them and meet their need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, go your way and be blessed, and we will see you tomorrow.